Hey everybody, I'm Rick Osborne. I'm the senior pastor of Memphis Firestarters Fellowship. Trina and Edie from Radical Lunch had asked me to record uh, a um, 15 minute or so uh, teaching or to share my heart about any subject and I thought about it, prayed about it. And I felt like uh, I wanted to share this concept that has happened in my life uh, over the last uh, 30 years uh, of going from knowing about God to knowing God. Uh, it reminded me um, in Luke 24, uh, the Emmaus uh, walk where um, Jesus had been crucified and he had been buried. And um, these two guys were walking down a country road and they were talking about uh, all the events. And so out of nowhere, this guy walks up beside him who is Jesus and says, hey, what's going on? He says, where you been, dude? Um, uh, all the events going on. And they started sharing uh, their hearts about uh, uh, Jesus and the, he, all the deeds he did. And uh, this guy, he could uh, raise the dead and heal the sick. And, and they, they walked along the way and, uh, and they sh were sharing about all the events. And uh, they said even um, uh, they went and they, they found the tomb empty and everybody's wondering what's going on here. We thought that he was going to be the redeemer of Israel. So uh, they got to the guy's house and they uh, encouraged Jesus to stay and, and have dinner, and he did. And it says, um, um, as they got to the house in 30, he says, Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread. Remember, the bread is his body and, uh, and, the, and the communion is uh, my body broken uh, for your healing. Uh, and it says he broke the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said, and I love this, and he said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? And so, um, it's my life was um, personally, I was not raised in a church. Um, I didn't even go to church until uh, seventh grade when I walked into the first day of seventh grade and I saw this incredible, beautiful, young 12 year old girl. Her name was Angie, um, who is now my wife for 40 years. And um, she said to me, um, if you want to see me on Sundays, you need to be at Park Ave Village Baptist Church. And um, I said, okay, I'll do whatever to be with you. And so that began my uh, church um, uh, career. Take that back. That began my walk with God. And even though I was just hearing about God and, uh, and the stories and um, uh, it was a beginning. And so uh, as we um, uh, grew in our relationship, we got married, we wanted to have children, uh, we um, attempted to have children, and then um, the doctor said, um, um, that's not going to happen. Uh, they, they looked at Angie and they did the laparoscope and they said, you have three major medical issues that will not allow you to have children. So that became the first time. We've been together at that point 12 years. Um, and But that was really the first time that we actually held hands and bleed together and prayed for anything. Uh, we were at church and we were going to Sunday school class. and uh, But we knew of God and we knew of the God that healed in scriptures, but we didn't know the God uh, personally. And so we held hands and we prayed, believing at the level of belief that we had uh, at the time, the mustard seed of our faith. And, and sure enough, uh, 80 days later, we're pregnant. We have our, our first child now, but then uh, we have Austin and then uh, he's born with issues. They said he has cystic fibrosis and that he will hopefully live up to the age of 18 and you'll bury him. Then we had our second child and same thing. She, um, was born with cystic fibrosis and they say, hey, you're going to, um, she'll be sick up until hopefully she'll make it to age 18. I remember when we got home from the hospital after our second child, we had to stay in 
um, a special hospital, a children's hospital for a couple of months with all the medical issues. And I got home, I'm on the end of the bed and I'm just broken. I'm a broken young man, a father, a young father. And, and uh, on the TV playing in the background is one of these faith healer guys from, this is now, we're talking about 1985. And, you know, we used to make fun of those guys. They had the hair, the white suits, the white shoes, and uh, their uh, delivery was very funny. And, um, um, and I, but I looked at that guy and he says, you know, God can heal you. God wants to heal you. Uh, and so I said, God, if, if that's true, if you tr are truly a God that heals, I'm a desperate, desperate father who desperately needs to know this God that heals. And so uh, I prayed that prayer and I got in the shower and had an incredible radical encounter with God. That, uh, that was um, a supernatural encounter. Uh, and I, I came out of that and that began my quest to find this God uh, that heals. And not just uh, the stories of the missionaries in Africa, but I need to know that God right in my own living room, in my own house, my own life, my own children. And so um, I began that quest. And um, I, uh, at first, when I started this, I, I thought there was a part of me that says, I need to earn God's favor. Because I had a father who was an ex-Marine and um, um, he provided everything I needed, uh, shelter and food in that, in that realm, but he had no capacity to meet my emotional needs, to, to speak to my heart, to speak life over me, to encourage me. He just did not have that capacity. And so I had that, I, I transferred that character, the father, earthly father to the heavenly father. And I said, well, if, if, if um, I need to earn my kids healing, I need to work, I need to be in every ministry and do everything. And, uh, and I was running around trying to uh, pay enough penance, pay enough works, credits to get my children healed. And, and the Lord took me through a process of, of loving me and showing me uh, that it's all about relationship, it's about love. And He loves me and He wants to heal my children, he wants to heal me, not because of what I can do for him, but because of the relationship he wants to have with me. And so that began, the, began this process. And um, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, you know, if you prophesy, you can prophesy and work miracles, and you can uh, have um, know every mystery there is, but you have not love, you have nothing. And um, so I began that process. And so... Um, I want to um, say that um, as you um, work in this process of finding out who you are and seeking out God and, and what is your gifting in your ministry, that you first start um, in um, uh, knowing who God is. Um, let's go to Ephesians 3. This reason... I bow my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, not works, but faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be what? Filled with the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works to him to be the glory in the church of Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. So it was a process. I want to encourage you guys as you seek uh, who you are and what you're um, ministry and calling is that you do it all based in the in being grounded in the fullness of God, who God is, uh, who you are in Christ Jesus. 
Uh, our identity in Christ is such a big thing is to, if you don't know who you are, it's hard to uh, represent the kingdom of God because you're just doing it from a head knowledge. You're not doing it from a heart knowledge, from a soul knowledge. And so I want to encourage you uh, to do as I did and, and say, Lord, uh, show me, show me your face, show me your heart, show me who you are. And out of that, out of that soil, out of that rootedness and that that you will grow and you will bear much fruit fruit that is grounded not in works not in performance not in need for acceptance but is, is grounded out of a, a pure uh, a heart to see the kingdom expanded and so um, um, I just want to say to you to um, the, the, the works and the words and the power. I love to, to give words and to hear words and to uh, prophesy and to and see that. But more than that, uh, I would love to, I want to see people loved on and, and met where they are and, um, and, and not to give words. Uh, people a lot of times will come to me and say, hey, you got a word for me. And, I used to, I have to confess, um, uh, just uh, if I didn't have a real word, I, I, there was a part of me that could not not have nothing because at some level that meant that I was failing or I wasn't um, living up to God's standard. So I would, you know, I would get generic words where the Lord is upon you and moving and I see, you know, this and that and and I'm sure a lot of it is true in a lot of ways, but it was not, it was not a word God was bubbling up in me uh, uh, because I had a need to, to perform. And so I confess that. And, um, and hopefully I've walked past that. I'm not saying I've walked completely past that, nor probably have you, but I just want us to begin as we're coming out of this time of, of, uh, of the the. I had a dream the other night, and um, and I was watching like one of these TBN uh, news stations, uh, the right, the Christian news, and they were talking about all the souls and the influx that came in during the Corona revival. And I woke up, and I was going, and I, I really felt like God was um, is, is doing a reset, a new beginning, uh, and us to kind of uh, uh, to get a new um, uh, 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 to recenter it in the Lord, if it were, and so um, and, and get off of our programs and and, and and to say, Lord, what do you say? What do you want me to do? What do you want my ministry to do? And so, uh, what do, what do you want me to do personally, as a father, as a husband, as a business owner? What do you what do you want me to do? How, how can the, for the next one year, five years, ten years, what are you saying to me that we be still and have ears to hear and eyes to see? What is the Spirit saying? to the church right now. So I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to pray, Lord, who am I in Christ Jesus, Lord? What is my motivation, Lord? If my motivation is not completely pure, Lord, that you, I give you permission to come into my heart and my mind and my soul to, uh, to show me uh, how to, uh, to do all things in love, do all things that, that Jesus said, I did nothing, I do nothing unless I see the Father doing it. So let that be uh, our, uh, the banner that flies over us, that we do only what we hear and see the Father doing. And because of that, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear with clarity. So uh, I just want to bless you guys. I just pray in Jesus' name that uh, you would um, um, be real with God, that you would cry out to the Father that the Father wants to meet your heart needs, your mind needs, and your emotions. So I just pray you cry to God, show me, Lord. Show me the Father. Show me the true character of the Father. Show me uh, who I am in you, Lord Jesus. Show me uh, my inheritance. Show me my uh, true identity. And out of that, Lord Jesus, let me only do what you're doing. Let me only say what you're saying, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would um, so enlighten me in the purpose of the kingdom that I'm supposed to be walking walking in. Lord, show me my lane. Show me my stream. Uh, let me not uh, try to get into a, a stream or a river that's not mine or someone else's. Let me be in my stream. Let me be the, the hand, the foot, the eye, the toe, whatever you've made me to be, Lord. Let me uh, speak to me about that and show me that purpose, Lord Jesus. And let me, Lord, be full of intimacy in that, Lord. And I just bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.